Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're diving into an important topic for anyone using radar-based golf simulators, interference. Whether you're using the Garmin R10 or the Mevo Plus or any other radar-based unit, interference can cause problems with your readings and I'll show you exactly what causes it and how to reduce it. Plus we're going to talk about how I built a Faraday cage to block interference. So stick around for that. Radar-based golf simulators work by sending out radar signals to track the ball, but these systems are sensitive to a variety of environmental factors. Let's break down the main causes of interference. First, we have electromagnetic interference, or EMI. This is when electronic devices like Wi-Fi routers, smartphones, computers, or even household appliances emit signals that disrupt the radar's ability to detect the ball properly. It's like having too much noise in the background that messes up the signal. Anything that emits radio frequencies or signals can interfere with your radar's operation. So if you're seeing odd readings or missed shots, you might want to try turning off or moving nearby electronics. One thing that we struggled with here was all of our heaters, our projectors and the, fa and the fans and the projectors, and our fans in the ceiling as well. So I had to remove some of those. Next up are metal objects. So radar signals don't like metal. Large metal objects, even golf clubs, furniture, or some types of flooring can absorb or reflect radar waves. This can cause interference and inaccurate readings. So the unit uses, your, uses a signal to bounce off of the golf club to read the ball readings, the club readings, etc. And so that's really important. So even though golf clubs can cause interference, it'd probably be wise to just move them off of your floor if you're struggling with those uh, misreads. So if somebody lays a golf club in between the ball and the radar unit, that could cause an issue. I've never experienced that, but I've heard other people who have experienced that. So really keep a clear path between things. So environmental factors like humidity, temperature changes, and extreme lighting conditions can also mess with the radar's accuracy. So if you're playing in a room with fluctuating temperatures or high humidity, be aware that could affect your readings. So I've never had an issue with this in my simulator bay um, because we keep it pretty temperature controlled in here. I store a boat, so we have to keep, keep it at least uh, 50 degrees to prevent freezing. Even though I do winterize the boat, it's still important to me um, to keep the, the humidity and the temperature fairly stable. One other environmental issue that I do know causes an issue for me is fluorescent lighting. So when I built this building, it was initially built as a dog kennel. So this side was the dog kennel and the other side was an outdoor area for dog runs. I've since enclosed both sides, but I put in LED lighting over on the boat side. So if I want, I can turn off these lights. So when I run my simulator, I run two uh, floor lights facing up towards the ceiling that helps best with webcam putting as well. But I try to keep the ceiling fan off and I definitely keep the fluorescent lighting off because that is one big factor for me that does affect uh, the Garmin R10 and it also affects the Mevo Plus in both of my trials. All right, now let's talk about reflective surfaces. Things like mirrors, windows, or even glossy floors can bounce radar signals off course, leading to confusing or false reading. So keep that in mind. Most of us use turf and that's usually not a reflective surface or an issue. Um, but metal buildings, which this is a metal building, the way I designed mine was is so that, you know, that the, the radar beam is coming from the back of the unit. I put it in the middle of the surface. I don't have too many issues with that. The Garmin R10 and the Mevo Plus have built in software adjustments to protect against that. But, you know, if you were going in a small simulator bay and you were gonna use a radar-based unit and you were a right-handed golfer hitting up against a metal wall and you're placing your unit directly behind you just because of size, that's probably gonna be an issue for you and you might wanna consider getting a different style uh, launch monitor. Some things that I've done to minimize reflective surfaces is, and also darken the room is I've put OSB up in a window and then I've put uh, this heat blanket over the glass door that sits here. 
This helps with insulation. It also helps with reducing any light input that might affect my radar signal. I just try to keep my environment the same all the time um, during all conditions in my building. Another common issue is obstruction. So if you set up your simulator and somebody walks behind the person swinging, A, they could get hit, but also B, um, it can block the signal. So if somebody's in their backswing or coming down on their downswing, <clears throat> it can cause problems with tracking the golf ball. So in our bay, we've set it up so that the golf ball sits on the mat here, but even a person walking between the simulator and the ball is set up here, or say that person in the chair over there gets up and walks through, you know, even if they straddle the unit and walk through, that can cause the interference. So if uh, you're playing a tournament, we play in a league every Thursday night. So if somebody walks between there, they just have to know, A, again, they could get hit by the club, and B, it also can mess up the person's swing. So try to try to keep that in mind. You know, we have people sit to the right and then back over there by the computer um, during, during play. And just something as simple as them moving or whatnot could definitely cause interference and cause a misread. This won't affect too many people, but if you're in a space with other radar-based systems operating nearby, like another golf simulator, frequency overlap can lead to interference. Some units operate in similar frequencies and can interfere each other. So if you are setting up multiple golf bays um, and let's say you're gonna use TrackMan, I'm assuming, I don't know for sure, but I'm assuming TrackMan allows you to change the frequency. So in order to avoid that, make sure you space out the radar units uh, that use the same frequency or check if your simulator allows you to adjust those frequency settings. Um, again, I'm assuming large setups um, in something like a golf simulator studio for a business, you know, those higher end units like TrackMan will probably allow you to adjust those things. But just keep that in mind. Lastly, um, make sure that you follow the manufacturer's recommendations for the calibration of each unit. So when I've set up the Mevo Plus, I believe their recommendation is eight foot from the ball. You can also set up different chipping areas and putting areas for the Mevo. Uh, the Garmin, I believe is the minimum is six foot. That's what I have mine set up as. Um, for chipping, chipping works a little bit better when your ball is slightly closer to the unit. So for drives and, um, and iron shots, typically those are you know towards the middle of the hitting surface on the Country Club Elite. And then my uh, wedge shots are towards the back. So um, that can really make a big difference. But, uh, you know, improper calibration or placement of your radar unit can also cause issues. So if your unit's too close to the wall, the ceiling or the floor, it could suffer from inaccurate measurements or interference. So now that we know what causes interference, how can we fix that? So follow a lot of the steps that we've already recommended, but the first step is ensuring proper placement of your radar unit, keeping it away from metal objects and other electronics. You should also calibrate your system to match the environment and try to minimize reflective surfaces. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is using a Faraday cage for extra protection. So one of the biggest interferences for me and my setup was um, the interference from the fan on the projector. So. Um, I could never get a chip to read, uh, or if it was less than 10 yards, it was very unlikely that I was gonna read. If I didn't get my golf ball at least a couple feet off of the ground onto the hitting surface uh, or the hitting mat, uh, then it wasn't gonna pick up and it was gonna misread. Now, now that I've built the Faraday cage, which we're gonna talk about here in just a second, um, that helps eliminate some of that electromagnetic interference that we talked about earlier. A Faraday cage is a conductive enclosure that blocks the electromagnetic interference by redistributing electromagnetic energy around the cage. I built this simple Faraday cage using metal screen and a metal filing box to shield my radar unit from outside interference. This is another example of a Faraday cage that I built. So this one um, was my first one that I built and really truly so the right up there where the, where the fan comes out is really where the interference comes from the most. So I tried to leave a big enough gap because if not, this projector will overheat. So this is just a bent refrigerator shelf around the unit and then I wrapped it with 
uh, stainless steel screen. The other one over here, that one is just a metal filing box that I purchased from Target. So the metal mesh that surrounds both of those projectors, it creates a barrier that prevents unwanted signals from affecting the radar. And since the radar is sensitive to things like Wi-Fi, um, cell phone signals, fans, uh, the fans from the projectors, the fans from my heater and the ceiling fan, <clears throat> the cage helps isolate the radar from those potential disruptions. This is the third Faraday cage that I built to block interference for the radar unit. And it's a simple DIY solution and it works. I found that it helps ensure my Garmin R10 Amiibo Plus give me more accurate and reliable readings, even in a more cluttered or interference prone environment. So as you can see up here, this is looks terrible in my opinion. I'm going to rebuild it at some point if I keep the Garmin R10 or the Mevo Plus as my launch monitor, likely I'm going to upgrade. But I left this side open so that this unit can breathe. I also left a pretty big gap between the front of this unit and the back wall of the cage and the screen material so that the unit can breathe. Um, I didn't want to enclose it in completely. So next step for me is to buy similar metal sheeting that goes around um, like my uh, 4k projector and I'll enclose the entire thing it'll breathe a little bit better and I think it'll still block the interference to the unit so now that we've discussed a little bit of interference and Faraday cages I want to show you a few chipping shots I also want to point out that this is the heater setup that I use I will use the Mr. Heater Big Max heater to heat the building up and I'll keep that running during the day when it's super cold here in Ohio. But then when I get out here, I turn this on and this is a kerosene heater that has no fans. It does a really great job of just keeping up the overall temperature. Um, it doesn't produce any smell and it works really well for us. So take a look at a couple shots here. All right, I'm connected through Springbok connector and GS Pro using the Garmin R10 for this test. Um, you can see I have my floor projector on and I have my other projector on. Both of those are in Faraday cages. Again, when it's super cold, I will use the Big Max heater and it doesn't seem to interfere. Sometimes I will run the fan and that also does not interfere, but I try to eliminate as much interference as possible. I have both sets of lights turned off because that provides the best projection on the 4K projector. And uh, so here is a couple of chip shots and we'll see how it works. So that read at 8.2 yards, which is uh, under that 10 yard range. It's obviously up a little bit higher on the screen. I am playing it a little bit back onto my hitting square, which tends to give me the best reads. That was a lower chip and it read eight yard chip overall, raw carry at 4.3. These are all the ones I struggled with a lot before I built the Faraday. No, there's a, there's a misread, but that was also a very, very short chip. I'll play it back behind this a little bit and see if that reads. That's typical of sometimes not playing it back as far as it should. Not read, just exactly like I would have expected. It was a little bit to the left. Doesn't even give me a raw carry, but a total carry of 5.5, which I feel is excellent for the Garmin R10. And that was played behind my heading square. I used to keep my heading square back in this distance and I would play it off the white line. There's another pretty accurate read in my opinion. It read a total length of 5.7 yards. So as you can see, it works really, really well as far as blocking interference. Before, when I didn't have the Faraday cages on, I struggled a lot. I couldn't even get anything to read below 10 yards. Now, let's talk a little bit about the Mevo Plus. Still not having great success with that no matter what I do with it. So, um, Garmin's a much cheaper unit, seems to read better. I use webcam putting. 
I can't get the flight scope Mevo to work at all. I have fiddled and fiddled and fiddled with that thing and I have had zero success. So until I upgrade uh, to either the, the Open Launch Nova or the overhead unit for a Pro TBX, I'm gonna stick with the Garmin R10 because it seems to be the best for me at this point. So there you have it. If you're struggling with interference in your radar-based golf simulator, make sure to check for these common causes and try some of these solutions like optimizing your setup or using a Faraday cage. Um, I obtained a lot of information from Ben at Triple Go Bogey Golf and also uh, from Joe Legowski. They've given me a lot of help um, as far as their videos go. Uh, they're great guys. They respond to comments. So follow those guys if you haven't. Also, please like and subscribe for more tips. And always, thanks for watching.